During the Nazi era in Germany, the government started indoctrinating youth in schools from an early age. At age 10, boys would join the Deutsches Jungvolk, the German Young Folk, and the girls would join the Jungmadlenbund, the Young Girls League. At age 14, the boys entered the Hitlerjungt, the Hitler Youth, and the girls would join the Bundeswehr Meidel, the League of German Girls. The Nazi government banned all other youth organizations in 1936. By 1937, total membership would reach almost 5.5 million members, and membership would become mandatory in 1939. Before joining the Hitler Youth and the League of German Girls became mandatory, parents who didn't want their children to join these organizations would be subjected to investigations by the Gestapo. Youth whose parents left the choice whether to join these organizations up to the child, their child would face extreme peer pressure to join. If they didn't join, they would frequently be instructed to write essays with subjects along the lines of why I am not in the Hitler Youth. They would be taunted by fellow students and teachers alike, and in some cases, their diplomas were withheld, which made it impossible for them to go to college. Some students would leave the organization only to rejoin when they realized that they would not be accepted by any university and were unable to find any good-paying jobs without having been a member. For any who might have doubted what the actual intent of the Hitler Youth was, all doubt was removed in 1938 when Hitler said, These boys and girls enter our organization when they're 10 years of age, and often for the first time get a little fresh air. After four years of the young folk, they go on to the Hitler Youth, where we have them from another four years. And even if they are still not complete national socialists, they go to labor service and are smothered out for another six or seven months. Whatever class consciousness or social status might still be left, the Wehrmacht will take care of that. The Hitler Youth wasn't the only method that the Nazis used to indoctrinate German youth. Classroom education was also used and abused to indoctrinate children into the Nazi ideology. Starting in 1934, the Nazi regime would see to it that any teachers who they deemed to be either Jewish or politically unreliable were fired and were not able to find work again as a teacher if they could find any work at all. History classes were taught showing the struggles that the German race had overcome to finally ascend to their position as the cultural and physical master race. Science classes, biology in particular, were taught in a way that demonstrated German superiority over other inferior parasitic bastard races. In 2015, at the behest of Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu, Russian President Vladimir Putin established by decree the All-Russia Young Army National Military Patriotic Social Movement Association, which is known as Unarmia. While what scouts there are in Russia, the total membership is around 20,000. The Unarmia has 1.3 million. Both teach firearms training. Scouts use either a 22 single shot rifle or air rifles. The Unarmia trains with the same Kalashnikovs used by the Russian army. They also practice rifle drill, similar to what is seen at Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers, as well as hand-to-hand -hand combat, doing rappel rope window insertions, clearing rooms, and other skills that are almost strictly military in nature. The Russian government has said they are bringing back military training in schools, and parents are not happy about this. In Armia is a voluntary organization. These classes where children will learn how to disassemble and reassemble an AK-47 within a set time, as well as practice shooting and learning how to don gas masks quickly, are going to be mandatory. If these were the only similarities between what Russia is doing today in Ukraine and what the Nazi regime visited upon the children of Europe during World War II, that would be bad enough in and of itself. However, there is another program that has been going on since the start of the war in Ukraine that bears a very striking resemblance to one that was visited upon non-German children during World War II. It was called Lebensborn. The Lebensborn program was handled by the SS and was started before the war. At that time, it provided help to mostly unmarried mothers, encouraging them to give their babies up for immediate adoption to what the SS determined to be racially pure and healthy parents, most frequently members of the SS and their families. Families. Once the war started, children between the ages of 2 and 6 with suitable Aryan characteristics were taken from the conquered territories and sent to two Lebensborn homes in Germany where they were adopted by proper SS families. Aryan-looking children were taken from Czechoslovakia, Slovenia, Belarusia, Ukraine, Norway, and Poland, with over 200,000 children being taken from Poland alone. Any children who failed any of the medical screenings or were determined to not look Aryan enough were sent to the camps and gassed. 
While the numbers are far smaller because of a far smaller pool of children, a report released in February 2023 by the Yale School of Public Health Humanitarian Research Lab documented that at least 6,000 children have been taken from Ukraine and sent to camps or facilities in Russia-controlled Crimea as well as locations all across Russia itself, one of which was in Magadan Oblast, almost 4,000 miles away in the Russian Far East near the Pacific Ocean. This camp was so distant from Ukraine that it was three times closer to the United States than it is to Ukraine. They identified at least 43 facilities that house these children scattered all across Russia and Crimea. Children whose guardianship could clearly be established were sent to re-education camps and other such facilities. Many of these children were taken with their parents' consent, though some were enrolled and sent without their parents' permission. Hundreds of children whose parents allowed them to go to these camps have not been returned by their specified return date, and in some cases, their return has been postponed indefinitely. Russian authorities cited three main reasons for what has been done with Ukrainian children. Some were orphans or wards of the state who they felt needed to be removed from a war zone. Some were children sent to camp with their parents or guardians' permission, and some were children in Ukrainian state homes who needed special medical care. Maria Lavova Belova, head of the Presidential Commission for Children's Rights in the Russian Federation, is the person heading up these operations. Commissioner Lavova Belova said that President Putin had directed her to, quote, take additional measures to identify minors left without parental care and to properly provide for them with state assistance as well as to provide such persons with social support established by legislation of the Russian Federation, unquote, who lived in the occupied areas of Ukraine. Some of these children have already been given Russian passports and either placed with foster families or were adopted by Russian families. On January 27, 2023, UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grande, said, Giving Ukraine's children Russian nationality or having them adopted goes against the fundamental principles of child protection in situations of war. This is something that is happening in Russia and must not happen. Teenagers who were taken from Ukraine are said to be attending high school in Russia, while younger children attend classes with local students in a rural area, most likely in Crimea. Some older boys were sent to summer camp, which were organized by the Yanarmia, where they're able to handle military equipment, drive trucks, and shoot firearms. Chief of Staff for the Sevastopol branch of Yanarmia said the camp program was, quote, aimed at fostering patriotism and love for the Russians' homeland, unquote. When camps failed to return children, parents would call and be told that they could come and pick them up themselves. However, camp administrators told them that grandparents, relatives, or people with power of attorney would not be allowed to pick the children up, only the parents themselves. This created an untenable situation where the father would not be able to leave Ukraine because of the war, and the mother would often be at home with younger children and would have no one to leave her kids with and was then faced with the situation of having to take themselves and their younger children across enemy lines to retrieve the child they had sent to camp. A significant portion of these families were forced to sell belongings and travel through several countries to be united with their child. In at least one case, when the parent arrived at the camp, the camp administrator tried to talk them into staying in Russia and told them that everything would be provided for them. On March 10 of 2023, Maria Lavova Belova posted on her Telegram channel that the Western media had completely distorted what had been done by the Russian Commission for Children's Rights in removing children from Ukraine to Crimea and Russia. She claims that only 89 children from Ukraine are still awaiting reunification with their parents and that all the rest that were sent to camp by their parents to get away from hostilities have been returned. However, the lie was put to this by a July 14, 2022 post on her Telegram channel in which she gushed about a girl named Sharachka asking everyone she saw, are you taking me to my parents? And how they were reuniting children who had been separated to different institutions because of their ages. She went on to say that there are families in Russia who had already taken in upwards of nine children, including children with disabilities. She also stated that 108 orphans had already received Russian citizenship and were meeting up with new families in Moscow who would take them to new homes in Kaluga, Tula, and Voronezh regions and the Yamalo Nenets Autonomous Okrug, as well as some that would remain in Moscow. The number of children 
minutes, she said, that have already been adopted or fostered already exceeds the 89 that she says still remain awaiting reunification with their families. She obviously is not aware of the saying, when something is on the net, it's out there forever. One has to wonder how long it will be before the Russian authorities deem those at least 89 children to have been abandoned by their families and give them Russian passports and then adopt them out without their parents' consent.